In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to design and model this birdhouse. Not only are we going to model it, but we're going to make sure that it works with whatever material you pick to make it out of. In our case, we're going to have an 8 foot long by 6 inch wide by 1 inch thick board. So you'll see as we model along, we're going to check to make sure that our parts that we model will fit on this board. At the end of this lesson, we're going to learn how to print out to scale the parts to make this so that you can cut out the parts by hand in your shop or use any kind of digital cutting equipment that your school or garage may have. To start off this birdhouse model, we're going to draw the base. To do that, we're going to use the rectangle tool. So go over to the toolbar on the left hand side, find and click on the rectangle tool. Click once on the ground and then start moving the rectangle to draw a shape about this size here. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the dimension of the rectangle that's currently on the screen, but we want to change that to five and a half inches by nine and a half inches. So type in those numbers and press enter and you'll see that our rectangle will snap to those exact dimensions. Next, from the left side toolbar, find and click on the push pull tool. Click and release on that face that we just created and start moving it up. In the bottom, you'll see the distance that we've moved it up. Type in one inch and press enter to make this push-pull operation exactly one inch. Next, find the paint bucket tool on the left side toolbar and then go locate that wood grain texture that we've been using. Hover over the base you've just made and hold down Option or Control, depending on if you're a Mac, PC, or Chromebook user, and click. That will paint all sides of our base. Next, grab the select tool from the left side toolbar. Click and drag from the top left to the bottom right, making a box around your entire board. That will select the whole thing. Right click on your newly selected board and select Make Component. This dialog box will pop up. Give it a name, let's call it Base. Don't worry about any of these other settings and press OK. In the left side toolbar, find and select the rectangle tool. Then hover over the back left portion of your board and SketchUp will use the inferencing engine to snap there. Click and release and start moving your rectangle tool to the right where it will snap to the other side of your board. Before you click again, if you take a look at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the current dimensions of this rectangle are five and a half inches by around an inch and 15 sixteenths. We want this to actually be five and a half by one. So we can change that by pressing comma and one inch and hitting enter and that will take the five and a half inches as red and make this rectangle an inch deep. It's good practice to check your dimensions as you're modeling along, so you can click the tape measure tool on the left side toolbar and click in between two points to check to make sure that the dimensions you typed are actually the dimensions that you see here. Now we're gonna get the push-pull tool and click and release on the newly created face that we have and start moving it upwards. If we take a look in the bottom right hand corner, we'll see the dimension that we're currently at. We want to bring this up a foot, so you can type in 12 inches or 1 foot and press enter. And as soon as you press enter, you'll see that our board snaps to exactly 1 foot tall. In the left side toolbar, find and click on the protractor tool. Then, put your cursor on the back of the board we just created. Move towards the top with the protractor green or on the face of the board until you snap to the midpoint like this. Once that happens, click. Then move your mouse pointer to the left and click in the top left hand corner and start pulling your mouse pointer down. You're gonna see that a dotted line is gonna come out from your mouse pointer and it will snap along the tick marks of the protractor tool. If you keep an eye on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see that you're snapping every 15 degrees when you keep your mouse pointer on the tick marks on the protractor tool. If you move away from those tick marks, you can freely place your dotted line at any angle you want. If you keep an eye on the bottom right hand corner as you move, you'll see how that happens. What we want to do is create a line at exactly 45 degrees. So hover your mouse pointer over those tick marks until you see 45 degrees in the bottom right hand corner and click to set down that dotted line. You're still on the protractor tool, so use the same steps to create another 45 degree angle on the right side. Next, find the pencil tool on the left side toolbar. Using the dotted lines as a guide, click and release with the pencil tool at the beginning and the end of each dotted line, just like I've done here. Once you've completed that, go over to the left side toolbar, find the push-pull tool, 
and click and release on the left side face and push it all the way through and click again. Double click on the next face to repeat the same push pull operation. You'll be left with a back panel with a perfect 45 degree peak like this. Now go over to the toolbar on the left and find the erase tool. You can click and release on each of these dotted lines to erase them because we're not going to need them anymore. You can now select the paint bucket tool, find the wood grain we've been using all along here, hover over your part and tap control or option depending on if you're on a Mac, PC, or Chromebook and paint all of the faces of this back panel. Next, with the select tool, click and drag from the top left to the bottom right to highlight all parts of this back panel. Right click on it, select make component, give it a name, we'll call it back, and again don't worry about any of these other options, and press OK. Next, click the pencil tool. Then start tracing the back panel that we just drew by clicking and releasing on each line segment. Follow your way all the way around, and when you finish completing the back panel, you'll see that a face is created. And when that face is created, it's going to be right on top of the wood grain that we currently have here. And when you orbit, it's going to flash a little bit. Um, that's okay. That's just indicating that there is a face on top of a face. Next, take the push-pull tool, click and release on that face that we just created, and start moving it out. Take a look in the bottom right-hand corner, and you'll see the dimension is whatever we've pulled it out to. We're going to type in one inch and press enter to make this exactly one inch thick. Now we're going to want to select this whole panel and make it a component, but if we try to use the method that we've used before, which is clicking and dragging and selecting it, it's going to select the part that we just drew, but it's also going to select the back panel behind it, and that's not what we want. To do this effectively, we're going to want to click three times on the parts that we just drew. So click, 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 three clicks in a row. That will select the entire part. Then you can right click it, select make component, give it a name. We'll name it front and press OK. Next, we're going to move this front panel into place. Grab the move tool from the left side and click and release in the bottom right hand corner as you see here. You can start sliding the panel forward, and if you take a look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the distance that we move it forward is displayed in the bottom right hand corner. We want to make this a nice whole number, so we're going to eyeball it and get it right about here and type in 5 inches and press enter, and that will snap this move at exactly 5 inches forward. Now, go to this front component we've created and double click on it. That's going to bring us inside this component so that we can make edits to it. In the left side toolbar, find the circle tool. Hover over the middle bottom of your part and move up and you'll see that you get a dotted line that will keep the circle centered on this board. Click and release and start moving the mouse pointer to the right and type in one inch for a radius. That will create a two inch circle when you press enter. Next, find the push-pull tool and click and release on that circle you just created and push it all the way through. Sometimes you need to click on the back of the panel. Click again and that should punch a hole through your front panel. Do the same thing to make the perch. Find the circle tool, hover over the middle, move straight up, click and release, and then move your mouse pointer to the right or left. For a radius, put in about an eighth of an inch to make a quarter of an inch hole. Take the push-pull tool and punch that hole through the front panel just like you did with the hole for the bird. Next, get the paint bucket tool, find that same wood grain that we've been using, hold down control or option to paint all faces of the front panel. Next, we're going to make the side panels. This is going to be pretty easy. We're just going to take the rectangle tool and click in two opposite corners between our front and back panel. And once you click, you'll get a side panel drawn to the exact correct dimensions because we use the front and back as a guide. After we do this, take the push-pull tool, click and release, start extruding the side panel in the direction that you want, type in one inch and press enter. Now we can take the paint bucket tool using the same technique we've been using, find that wood grain that we've used everywhere else, control or option click to paint all faces, and then triple click, right click, select Make Component, 
And we're going to name this one side panel. Don't worry about those other buttons and press OK. Next, we'll orbit around so we're looking at the other side here to make moving and copying the side panel a little bit easier. So after we get orientated the right way, we'll take the Move tool, click on the top left-hand corner and start moving the side panel and then tap Control or Option to leave a copy of this behind. If you need a reminder about which button you should push, you can always take a look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And here, that will tell you which button you need to push to leave a copy behind or do other move functions. Next, we're going to make the roof panels. So first I'm gonna zoom in here so I've got a good view of the roof. And then we're gonna use a different kind of rectangle. We're gonna use the rotated rectangle tool, which you'll see here. And with this rectangle, you're gonna to wanna to position it on the top of the roof so the protractor is matching the angle of the roof. Then click once and then click again on two opposite corners of the roof. Click again on a bottom corner and you're gonna get a face that's parallel with that roof that we've already drawn. Take the push-pull tool, click and release, and start extruding your roof out. Type in one inch and press enter. Now your roof's looking pretty good, but we need an overhang on the right and on the front. So to do that, we'll click and release the push-pull tool and bring this down a little bit, and we'll make this a half an inch. So we'll type in 0.5 and press enter. Now to extend the roof in the front, this is pretty simple. Click and release on this front face and start dragging it forward. And then we can point at the front of our existing base and click again and SketchUp will line them up automatically. No need to do any fancy math. I'm going to check here with the tape measure tool just to make sure that our roof is the right size for the board that we're going to be cutting it out of. I check these two points and see that its width and its depth will fit on the material that we have. Using the same techniques that we have throughout this model session, I'm going to click the paint bucket tool, find that wood grain, and paint this whole right roof one color. Next, I'm gonna triple click it, right click it, select Make Component and give it a name. We're gonna call it Right Roof and press OK. Now drawing the left roof is gonna be nearly the same as drawing the right roof, but it's gonna be even easier. We're gonna take that same rotated rectangle tool. Here I'm gonna click on the top left corner of the roof, then the top right corner of the roof, and then move the pointer down and just click on the bottom line here that makes up the uh, bottom of the angle of those two top panels. Now I'm going to take the push-pull tool and extrude this roof panel out one inch by typing in one inch and pressing enter, and then bring this down a half an inch by clicking and releasing and typing in 0.5 and pressing enter. And again, I'm gonna give this one quick check with the tape measure just to make sure that it will fit. And if we click from this bottom left-hand corner, this top right, we'll see that it will fit on our board and our depth is good as well. So we're going to go ahead and take the paint bucket tool and take that same wood grain, paint all sides of this, triple click on our roof, right click, select make component, and we're gonna give this a name, roof right. Press okay and you are done. Now for one last little flourish, your bird is gonna need a place to perch. And to make a perch, we're gonna use the circle tool. So select the circle tool from the left side toolbar and hover over the hole that we created. And you'll see that the circle tool will snap to the center. It's going to be really difficult if you do it this way to get that circle to lay flat on the front face of the front of our birdhouse. So there's actually a little trick that you can do to make this a lot easier. To complete this little trick to make it easier, go select the circle tool again and hover over the center of that hole until it says center in front. And it's saying center in front because front is the name of the component that we're hovering over. So here's where the trick comes in. Before you click again to make that circle, if you tap the left, right, or up arrow, it will turn the circle to match one of the axes in SketchUp. Inevitably, one of these axes is going to be the direction that you need to make this circle perfect. In our case, we've tapped the left arrow so that our circle turns green. Once you get the circle facing the right direction, you can just move your mouse pointer to click to the edge of the hole that we have to set the circle down the exact width of the hole. After that, take the push-pull tool, extrude the perch out as long as you'd like, select the whole thing, you can paint it if you want to paint it a wood grain. I'm going to go ahead here and find that same wood grain that we've been using. 
and paint it up. And then with the whole thing selected, I'm gonna right click it, select make component, and I'm just gonna name this component perch and then press okay. And there we go, we've got a nice perch on our birdhouse. Congratulations, you have modeled a birdhouse. And not only have you modeled a birdhouse, but you successfully learned how to use design thinking to make something that is gonna work in the real world. This birdhouse is gonna match the dimensions of an actual piece of wood that you can find. In the next part of this video, we are gonna set this up for printing so that you can take these plans out to your garage or shop and use them as a guide to build this thing for real. Welcome to part two. Here we're going to learn to take our birdhouse design and lay it out so that we can print out all of the dimensions for the parts so that we can take those dimensions into the shop and actually build the birdhouse. Now as you know, we modeled each part of this birdhouse as a separate component and this is going to make it a lot easier for us to lay it out on our board. So to get started, I'm going to get our rectangle tool, click and release, and then look down in the bottom right hand corner and make this board the dimension of our actual board that we have. In this case, I've got an eight foot by six inch board. I'll take the push pull tool and make it one inch thick, which is the thickness of my board. And then I'll go ahead, triple click to select it all, select the paint bucket tool and just get a texture to paint on this thing. Next, I'll right click and select make components. And we're just gonna call this pine board and press okay. Now we're gonna start laying out all the pieces. And that means we're gonna take this birdhouse apart one piece at a time and lay it on that board. First thing I like to do is select the whole birdhouse like this, take the move tool, tap controller option to make a copy of the birdhouse. So we can leave the original assembled and just take apart this copy. I'll position the view so I can see both the birdhouse and the board on the screen. Then with the select tool, I'll select each part, then select the move tool, Click a base corner of each part and move it over towards this pine board. I'll hover over so I can get it to snap in place and I'll click to set the board down. Then I'll hover over those red plus marks and rotate the part until I can get it placed just on the board like you see here. And this lets me know that it'll fit and that we're gonna have enough material. So you see here that I'm gonna repeat this process for each part of the birdhouse. And you'll see as we lay these parts out, we're gonna get a nice diagram of how we're gonna cut them all out. And we also get confirmation that they all fit. So after you finish moving all your parts, it's gonna look like this. At this point, I'm gonna click and drag and select all of the birdhouse parts and actually move them off of the board. This is gonna make it a lot easier to dimension in the next few steps. With all of the parts selected, I go over and click the move tool, click on the ground somewhere, Move up and click again, and you'll set those parts down away from the board like you see here. Now it's time to start adding dimensions. In the left side toolbar, find the dimension tool, which is typically under the tape measure tool. To make a dimension, you hover over one point and click, and then hover over another point, click again, and then move your mouse pointer around to place the dimension. You repeat this for each dimension that you need to place. So in our case, we want a width and a height for each board that we're gonna be cutting out. And it's simple, just click in two places and then the third click places the dimension. Repeat this for every part of your birdhouse. And if you watch as I'm doing this here, it's simply just clicking on two points that represent the overall dimension, moving the mouse pointer, and just placing the dimension somewhere so it's reasonably easy to read. After you're done dimensioning all the parts, go ahead and put a dimension in the board so someone who's building this knows the size of the board to get. Also, place a dimension on the beginning and end of all of your parts so people know how much of the board they'll need to use. And that's it, you've got all the parts dimension that we need. The next step is to set this up for printing. To get started printing, look for the folder icon in the top left hand corner and select print. You'll be taken to the print dialog which shows your model on a piece of paper. You can actually click and drag and orbit that model around to get any view that you want. There are also preset views represented by these icons of a house. We can do an isometric view, a front view, a left view, etc. What we want for this print is a top view, so we're going to click on the icon that shows the top view of a house. 
If you need to shift around the view a little bit, you can hold down shift on your keyboard and click and drag to reposition the view on the piece of paper. You can zoom in and out on the model the same way you do in SketchUp. Between these two tools, you can get your view lined up just the way you'd like. You also have the option of setting a white background or not using this checkbox. This will take away any colored background you had in your SketchUp model and can certainly save a lot of printer ink if you're printing this out on a color printer. Once you have your view set up, it's time to print. You can click Print to PDF in the bottom right hand corner. You'll get this dialog box explaining how the process works and you'll click Continue. SketchUp's special robots will go ahead and prepare a PDF for you. After a few moments, your PDF will either appear as a download, as you see here in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, or it will pop up full screen like this, and you'll have the option to print it to any printer that is connected to your computer. You can even save it as a PDF as well, if you'd like. If you're satisfied with the preview, go ahead and print it out and take these plans off to the shop and build yourself a nice birdhouse. So now that you know how to print your SketchUp model, here are a couple extra tips that'll make your prints even better. This particular part of the birdhouse that's got the hole for the perch and the hole for the bird to climb through might require you to print out a full scale version of it so you can get those holes located in exactly the right way. To do this, set up a print just as we did before and pan and zoom that part that we need the full scale picture of to the center of the screen. Make sure you're set on the top view. In the setting for scale, you're going to want to make in drawing and in model both one inch. And what this means is that you are going to be printing out a full size version of this part. You'll also want to make sure you check print scale because that will show the scale on your print. After doing this, if your part isn't quite where you want it on the screen, hold down shift and click and drag to pan it exactly where you want it on your piece of paper. And that's it. You've got this full scale print all set up to print out. Go ahead and click print to PDF and follow the steps we did before to get this out of your printer. Nice work. Now the last and coolest tip is that you can dimension a 3D model. So you can actually use that dimension tool that we used before to put dimensions right on this birdhouse. And not only can you put dimensions on, but you can also put labels on parts. So if you go to where we got the dimension tool in the left side toolbar, you're gonna to see another tool for labeling. It's this one here. If you click on it and click on each part and move your mouse pointer away, you'll see it'll actually label the part with the correct name. And this is because as we created each one of these parts, we were labeling them as we went along. So to add labels to them, we don't even have to type in their names. It's simply click and click again to put the labels on there. We can make a print of this 3D model and it'll have our dimensions and our labels on it. This can be great to help you assemble something after you've cut all the parts. After you're done setting up this print, just click print it out and you can have this in the shop along with your 2D cutouts. So you'll know exactly how to put your birdhouse together. If you're doing any kind of digital fabrication, be that laser cutting or CNC cutting, you're going to want to export flat vectors of your model. And you can actually do that right within SketchUp for Schools. To do that, go to File and go to Export and go to DWG and select 3D even though you want a 2D flat model. Check off Only Edges, select AutoCAD 2013 for the file type and click Export. SketchUp will take a minute or two, and then you'll eventually be presented with a download link for your DWG file. That DWG downloaded vector file will open it in any program that supports DWG or DXF, depending on the format that you use to export. And once you get that, you'll have vectors that can go in any CNC machine or any laser cutter very easily.